The Bible tells us to read, right? And, and it also tells us in the last book, this is he that read. Read that. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. It says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, which is the Bible, and read. We don't read. We're not in slavery no more. We can read now. Bring it out. It's true. Everything he's told you came from where? What did he when he was talking to you? He says, what was he reading out of? He was reading out of the Bible, right? So you probably learned the more more in the past 15, 20 minutes that you learned all your life in Christianity, right? Right? So what we what are we saying to our people? Come back to these laws, that's the commandments, right? You got you got the past, you got Jesus loved you on the license plate, right? But we'll tell you he'll kill you for the laws you break. Out. You see what I'm saying? He'll say, Jesus loves you. But we're all trying to open the Bible and show you what truth, what love really is. Get love in the Bible. You understand what I'm saying, sir? So we got to come back to these laws and commandments. People don't like tough love. They want sucker love. That's what the preachers give you. Preachers give you sucker love. Yeah, give me your money, run around church for an hour, and uh, just give me what you got. People selling their houses to get money to preachers to buy airplanes to go nowhere. They do nothing. They ain't bringing us out of captivity, they ain't keeping us in captivity with that mess, right? Right, right we gotta stand up. We, oh, you all know what tough love is? Tough love is what you see right here in front of you, reading this Bible to you, not at you. Letting you know that you have to come back to these laws that's the commandment. Right. The Bible tells us uh, to go out into the highways and byways, right? Read that, I want you to read that first. The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 3. Bring it out. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. That we do what? That we keep his commandments. How do we keep God's commandments? What, what's the first thing we have to do? What's the process that we have to do? In the church, they tell you, come on up to the altar and do what? And get saved, right? What you saved from? You ain't saved from nothing. It's supposed to be telling you what love is, how you, how you keep God's commandments. Love is according to God's law, statutes, and commandments. That's Not right. coming up in the front of front church and uh, standing there and let the preacher put his hands on you, right? Right? And, and, and bear his life on you when he puts your hands on you, right? So what we're showing you is what love is truly is in the Bible. Read that again. Hello. For this is love. Of, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are hard. That's what it says. They're not grievous. It's not hard to do. You got, it's, it's easy to do. You can't even go to work. That's not hard for you. Why? Because you got to pay them bills. Right? That's just how, that's how we're supposed to be with the Bible. It's not hard for us to get up and go to work. Because the Most High is the one that allows you to get up and go to work. But we won't give back to him what we owe to him. We owe him. He don't owe us. Right? So let me show you what is true love in the Bible. I'm gonna show you something that we're gonna bring out to the brother about. He, he brought up the image of the beast, right? You know what that's talking about when they say the image of the beast? Not, do you have any idea what we're talking about? When they say the image of the beast, somebody turn that around so you can see it. So, he's talking about this image that we was given in slavery, right? This is not Christ. It says the image of the beast. What image is that? Caesar boy took his son and painted him as the Messiah. It's called iconoclasm. Right. Right? Lies, right? Whitewashing. Right. That's what it is. Taking, painting over the black Christ, turning him into so-called white, but not right. white. He ain't white, he's red. That's, That's right. what the Bible calls him red. Right. Next to the way is he. Right. So, what color is Christ? Bring it out. Do you know, sis, what color? 
Your, your color. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. He's your complaint. We're, right. we're going to show you that in the Bible. I'm not going to give you my words. We're going to give you what does say the Lord. Get Revelation. Got it? The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. Look at that. His head and his hairs were white like wool. That's white as snow. It says his head and his hairs are white as wool, right? Right? So, who? Like what? They like what? His head and his hairs were white like wool. White like wool. Who has woolly hair on the face of the earth? Who has woolly hair? Touch your hair. That, that's, wool. that's wool. That's wool. Right? Right. That's woolly in Texas, right? Right. Read. Really? As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And it said his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why was his eyes a flame of fire? What was his first miracle? What was Christ's first miracle? He turned water into, right, that was his first miracle. So you think he just poured it out when he made it? He drank some of it. The Bible tells us to do things in moderation. Christ drank wine in moderation. But when we drank wine, the whites of our eyes turned red, right? right. So that's the depiction of Christ. We're showing you what the true depiction of Christ is in the Bible. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burnt in a furnace and his feet like under fire brass as if they burnt in the furnace if you throw anything in the fire and leave it in there what color does it turn black right Read. as if they burnt in a furnace and his voice is the sound of many waters as if they burnt in a furnace right so let's tell you christ is a dark-skinned man right. not this picture of this image uh caesar borges uh son christ is a black man with a loud boy why do you think we lie because we could, some of us come from the same tribe as Christ. Hey. When you get black people together, they get loud, don't they? So he said he had a voice of many waters, right? We're crying loud in the street so the people across the street can hear. We ain't gonna come up here like, John Steen, this is my Bible, and I look. The hell with that. We ain't, we, ain't got, we ain't coming out here for that. Like hey. I said earlier, we're gonna give you that tough love, not that sucker love. Hey. But you get that sucker love from the pastor when he reads Matthew, when he, we're gonna read to you Malachi 2 and 7. Get that. That's when you get the snow. We're gonna show you how it's sucker love and not tough love, right? Christ wasn't no, Christ don't walk around handing out flowers and roses. He was saying he was he came to you to bring you back to these laws that's commanded, telling you to repent. Right. Read that. The book of Malachi, chapter 2 and verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So that priest or that pastor that's got that license place, I love you, but won't tell you that we won't tell you that God a key for the laws, laws you break. Preachers what? And the priest, for the priest's lips should, should keep knowledge. So he should be teaching you knowledge according to the Bible. And they should seek the law at his mouth. We should seek the law. The law is the Bible. Since the law is the Bible. From beginning to the end is the law of the Most High. Read. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So the pastor is supposed to be the messenger to you. But he's giving you, he's telling you lies. Did you know that you're an Israelite? What try, what, what's your nationality? Yo, your race. When you fill out that application, what do you put on there? You put Afri African American. On the sign, turn me around for me, folks. On the sign, if you can get out, so we want you to come over here so we can talk to you. Oh, you had knee Okay, we understand. So on the sign right here, right? It's got the, the biblical names on the left, on your left. On the right are the names that everyone that had us in captivity, those are the names that they gave us. Right? So, you say you're African American, right? You come from the, you're, you're from the tribe of Judah? I'm just assuming, I'm not sure. Right? You, when you fill out an application for African American, so you, you come from the tribe of Judah. That's the head tribe of all tribes. That's the right. tribe that Christ came from. It's in the Bible. Right. right. Read it. The book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. See, you won't hear ever Americans say Christ sprang out of what? Out of Judah. So it's telling you what tribe Christ came from, right? Read. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So Moses didn't speak nothing about Christ's priesthood, right? But he's telling you that Christ came from the tribe of Judah. And if you go back in the New Testament, it tells you, go to Deuteronomy 33, the, um, um, Deuteronomy 33 and Deuteronomy 49. 
I mean, yeah, Deuteronomy 49, that tells you about the Israelites, what Jacob did with his sons before he passed on, right? But what we're showing you is that you have to come back to these laws, that's the commandments. Why? Why is it vital that you come back to these laws, that's the commandments? You're on. Why is it important that you come back to keeping these laws, that's the commandments? Laws, that's the commandments, right? So, when, when the people tell you when you die, you're going to go to heaven. How many gates is in heaven? How many gates? Gates. You know, they tell you the big pearly gate. When you get to heaven, you're going to go through that big pearly gate. So, is that one gate or is that many gates? I would say many gates. How do you know? How would you know that? If somebody asks you, how many gates to heaven? How would you show them in the Bible? You don't know? We're going to read it for you. Revelation chapter 21 verse 12 and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates said how many gates and had 12 gates so heaven has 12 gates not one big pearly gate like the church tell you right and at the gates 12 angels so it's telling you there's angels at them gates ain't just no gates closed and nobody standing there read and names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Just like this sign we just showed you, the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. From Judah all the way down to Issachar, right? Read. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. So it's telling you, it's 12, right? He said three gates on north, south, east, and west, right? So that's telling you that's 12 tribes. If there are 12 gates, there have to be 12 uh, manner of people going into those gates, which right. is the children of Israel, that's right? right? We don't know that because the church is... Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Teaching it that. Right. I, I read this week in an article a pastor saying they don't know why people are coming to them with a middle issue. We got the we got the solution right here. The, the, you got the truth right here in front of you, right? right? The Bible is the truth that you should be looking at every day. That's right. where you get your mental healing from. Oh no, I need somebody to talk to. Well, Christians claim they they got a personal relationship with God, which is a lie. The Bible don't tell us that. The Bible says, seek ye out the book and read. Get that for me. The Bible tells us to read, right? And, and, and it also tells us in the last book, blessed is he that read. Right. Read that. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Yeah. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord, which is the Bible, and read. We don't read. We're not in slavery no more. We can read now, Master. We don't have to worry about them saying, oh, you go read back then, they poke you out, cut your fingers off, right. or do something, some mutilation to you. But we don't have to worry about that now. Read. I mean, read um, on one, in the Revelation where it says, blessed is he that read. So we have to read, sis. We have to know who we are. First, we've got to find out who we are. It's not an Afro-American. Or uh, every, you see, like every 10 years, our name changed. Negro, right. colored, black, African-American. How come the white man's name don't change? Bring it out. How come his name, his true name is Esau? Wasted away is he. Caucasian. Why? Caucasian mean they, that, they know where they came from. From the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Right. We came out of the, we came out of Israel, Jerusalem. That's our homeland. Did you know right. that's our homeland? Huh? Did you know Jerusalem was our homeland? Right? So knowing that says, what must you do? Read this. We're going to read this and then I got another scripture for you. Read. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things 
which are written therein. Blessed are you when you read and you keep those things that's written therein are the commandments. That's what he's talking about. That's the only way and the only avenue that you have of getting to the kingdom of God, right? right? It's keeping those commandments. You don't keep those commandments, you will die. Right. But your pastor won't tell you that. Right. right? He gonna lay it out smooth. He give you those smooth words. Oh, ha, this, ha, that. We don't do that. Because right. that ain't what the Bible say. Right. The Bible doesn't tell us to, to get up and stand up in front of people and lie. Right. The Bible tells us to stand before our people and read out of the book. That's what he tells us to do and give you the knowledge and the understanding. So have you gained any knowledge here today, sis? Nehemiah 8 and 8. You got a lot of knowledge today. You gonna come to our school? We got a school right down the road on that flyer. Did you get the flyer? Our school is on the back of that. Our phone number is on the back of that. I don't want you to leave yet. Don't leave yet. I'm still, I'm still gonna, I'm still trying to get it across to you what you must do with that. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So are we giving you the senses? Are you getting the understanding of what you're supposed to be doing? Right? That's the pastors don't do that. The churches don't do that. Right? Right? That's why you keep hearing me say they won't tell you or die for breaking the laws. Pastor ain't going to tell you that because he, cause he'll know be like, hmm. What I got to do to change then? What you have to do is change is repent. Acts 3 and 19. So that's what you have to do to start keeping these laws and commandments. You got to repent. Paul said in uh, Corinthians 15 that he died daily. So if he dies daily, what he's doing? Okay, I didn't do this right. Okay, Lord, forgive me. That's repentance, right? You're not taught that in the church. Uh, what, what's the scripture, the main scripture that they give? Uh, you're blessed with your mouth. Believe Say it with your mouth, believe in your heart. What's Hebrews? You know what I'm talking about? Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. Right. You got it? What, the one they say? Yeah. We're going to read that scripture to you that, they, that you read, that they tell you to read and that you're saved. No. So that means everybody that dies, when Christ comes back, they go to heaven. That's not true. So what's sin then? So what's the, you mean tell me I can sit all my life and still make it in the kingdom? That's a, that's a lie. No. Everybody does not go to heaven. I, no, I'm not saying that. I'm going to show you in the Bible it says that. Says that. You can't get the kingdom running around here killing everybody and he comes back, he takes you to heaven. That makes no sense. You can't put a people in a oppression, oppression and think after you oppress these people four or five hundred years that you're going to be sitting right alongside them in the, in the kingdom. That makes no sense. Right? The Bible, I'm going to show you that in the Bible as well. Read that. Kingdom. Matthew chapter 19 verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So this young man came to Christ and said, What I got to do to have eternal life, right? Read. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. Oh, he said, Why are you calling me good? I'm not good. Only one good, and there's one good. And he's going to tell you who? That is God. That's God. God's the only good one. Christ came to do what God said. Read. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said, Do what? But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. No, he said, if you will enter into life, eternal life, you have to keep the commandments, sis. So, but for us to get the kingdom, we have to keep the commandments. Now, listen to what, watch what this young man did. Read. He said unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt not do, do thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So he said, what he, he told him what he should do, right? All those things, don't murder, don't steal, don't kill. Read on. The young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. So people say that, uh, I'm doing that. I've done this from my youth up. I'm doing it now, read. What, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, 
if thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast. He said, if you will be perfect, go and sell what you have, right? He said, I've done it from my youth up. Read, read. And give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. So he was telling the young man to go and sell what he had, right? Seeing what he's going to do. Read. And come and follow me. But when the young man had heard the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So he told him what to do, and he said, do this. And the young man said, hmm, I don't want to do that. And he walked away sorrowful. Why? Why did he, why did it, why, why did, why didn't he do what Christ said? He wanted to keep what he had, right? So Christ was seeing what he was going to do. Same thing he's doing with you. He's seeing, is my daughter going to repent and right. come and keep these laws, statutes, and commandments? Or is she going to just film these brothers and then just, we'll never see you again? Right. Right? Is that what, is that what you're going to do, sis? <clears throat> you're going to look at it, the flyer, right? You're going to call that number, and eventually, <clears throat> we're hoping that once you call that number, you come and visit the school, right? right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.